Hello there, everybody. Quiz me, quiz you all over, quiz it better, and of course, quiz me through the phone. So many songs that could have been so appropriate for us this evening on what is a very, very special occasion indeed, because it's the last in this current run of the beautiful quiz with me, James Richardson. I know, but the football's coming back soon, so hey. Now, if you haven't already registered, make sure you do so at btsport.com slash the beautiful quiz, at which point you'll be able to share a deep and meaningful quiz with people all across the country. And uh, indeed, follow your progress on our live leaderboards as well. We've also got two very special guests with us this evening. They are both Premier League former title winners. Oh, look, there they are. Julian Lescott on your right and on the left, Chris Sutton. Welcome to you both. Julian, your first time with our quiz, but you're an experienced quizzer, I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah, I've been taking part in a few quizzes during that. I bet you have. Not football ones, though. Been banned from the football right. ones. Hey, what's that stuff on your wall? What are those trophies? Oh, it's just a few bits that I was lucky enough to... to to win during my playing career, so I'm in the office tonight. What, what, what are they, Julian? What's the ball? Is that um, a player of the year? Yeah, that is, I think that was one of the early ones. So that, uh, there's three up there, one from Everton and two from Wolves and then a few. Let me try and right. move it around. Oh my goodness, so, look at that. Right. Yeah. Oh good, I'm glad Let's they put some of this second I thought maybe they were urns or something and I'd, I'd kind of been a bit indelicate. But, <laughs> <all right. laughs> Chris Sutton's also also with us. Christopher, lovely to have you back with us. Uh, You have been participating in the quiz in the last couple of weeks, haven't you? Yes, I have. Mixed fortunes. Um, Last week I did, well, disappointed with some of the questions uh, which came out last (laughs) week. I hope Duncan's made improvements uh, this week. I love Jolene's trophy cabinet there. Most of mine are up in the loft. I can see the hat-trick balls up there, though, Chris. Don't worry, I can see them. Uh, yeah, they, uh, I don't know whether they are hat trick balls or I don't, I don't know whether they're mine or not. I'll have to have to check. <sighs> yeah, <laughs> so casual. They might be Premier League hat trick balls. I don't know, mm. but that's fantastic. Chris, also just have to ask you about the Wi-Fi, which uh, that's fingers crossed. That's all going to be watching okay tonight, is it? Well, well, well North Norfolk, uh, yeah, as you well know, doesn't get a good reception. Um, but, right. I mean, last time I was on, I, I smashed Peter Crouch with Wi-Fi problems. So, Julian, <laughs> beware. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I've got them same problems, beware. don't worry. Got the same excuses right. ready, pending. All right. Well, you, you both always have a, a good reception with us. By the way, if you haven't already registered, let me just quickly mention again, BT Sport dot com slash football you register make sure you've got a device there ready to enter uh, the answers on and then just sit back and enjoy the quiz while you're sorting that out let's meet the aforementioned duncan alexander the man behind the questions a poignant night this must have been bittersweet for you duncan putting this last set of tests together for us emotional very emotional i mean slightly less emotional now i've heard chris flagging off the questions but you know uh <laughs> We'll see how he does, won't we? Um, yeah. <laughs> round, okay. round two, round four, whatever you want to call it, for Chris. All right. Okay. Well, a lovely atmosphere <laughs> then ahead of us as we enter into this last <laughs> The Beautiful Quiz. Hopefully you've all got your devices charged and your dishwashers switched off and all that kind of thing. We have ahead of us six rounds of footballing Oof. trivia. It is all just for fun. You will be on the clock, though. And once you've entered an answer, you can't retract it. Very good. Oh. Round one, I have to tell you, is one of the toughest we've ever had because it's all about this season in the Premier League. Yeah, No, me neither. Anyway, it is multiple choice, so you will have 15 seconds for each one. And the first of your questions is coming up after this. Who scored Crystal Palace's winner at Man United in August? The first time ever that a visiting side had scored a 90th minute winner at Old Trafford in the Premier League. Was it Jordan Ayew? Was it Luka Milovojevic? Was it Patrick Van Arhol? <laughs> All right. We're off to a cracking start. Oh. Here comes question two. Tebo Puki, remember him? Against which side did Tebo Puki score a hat-trick on his first home appearance in the Premier League? Was it Chelsea, Newcastle United or Watford? Tamo Puki. Looking forward to seeing him back in action. On to question three. Who scored both of Wolves' goals in their 2-0 victory against Man City at the Etihad? 
And this are two of Julian's former clubs, of course. Raul Jimenez, Ruben Neves, or Adama Traore, who got both of the goals in that 2-0 win over Man City. Extraordinary match that was. Question four. Which of these players has not scored a Premier League hat-trick for Chelsea in this current 2019-2020 Premier League season? So far, anyway. Which of them has not grabbed a Premier League hat-trick? Tammy Abraham, Olivia Giroud, or Christian Pulisic? Question five. Pierre-Omerick Aubameyang scored his 50th goal in all competitions for Arsenal against Wolves in November. How many games, though, did it take him to reach the half-century? Those are your options, 78, 88 or 98 for Aubameyang to reach 50 goals in all competitions for Arsenal. Question six. Who was the first manager to leave their post during the 2019-2020 Premier League campaign? Was it Unai Emery? Was it Javi Gracia? Was it Mauricio Pochettino? Who went first in the Premier League? Question seven. Which English player has provided the most Premier League assists so far this season? Trent Alexander-Arnold, Jack Grealish, or James Madison? Absolutely, Julian. Oh. Mm. Mm. Oh, Only 15 yeah. seconds on each of these, remember? Question eight. Which of these players, Danny Ings, Harry Kane, or Marcus Rashford, has scored at least 15 Premier League goals so far this season? Is it Ings? Is it Kane? Is it Rashford? Mm. At least 15 Premier League goals so far this season. Only one of them's done it. I'll try okay. that, Chris. Question no. nine. Question <laughs> nine. Other than Liverpool, which side has the longest has had the longest winning run in the Premier League this season? Chelsea, Leicester City, or Manchester City? Who's had the longest winning run in the Premier League other than Liverpool, of course, as we know? And question 10, Jorginho has been booked more often than any other player in the 2019-2020 Premier League campaign. How many times, though, has he gone into the referee's book? Eight, nine, or ten? Pick one. But hurry up, because round one is drawing to a conclusion. All righty. Mm -hmm. What did you make of that, Jodian? Mm, yeah, some spicy ones in there, but confident yeah. I got the majority right, hopefully. All right. All right. Chris, how are you feeling? Um, I, I think I did really well in that round. And my, <laughs> I'm getting the questions a few seconds later, so I'm actually getting a shorter time to answer. I'd be surprised if I didn't get at least four. Out of oh, 10. Okay, I'm impressive stuff. Let's check the answers then with Duncan. Uh, Duncan, first of all, who scored Crystal Palace's winner at Man United in August, which is the first time, etc. and so on? Who was it? Uh, that was Patrick Van Aanholt. Aha. Uh -huh. Excellent. Did you get that one, Chris? Yep. Yeah. yeah no, but you, uh, how did you pronounce Milivojevic earlier? You said it differently. <laughs> I'm not sure. Games, didn't you? That was an interesting I said, Luka pronunciation. <laughs> Oh, look at me, look at me. Hey, yeah. Chris, yeah. you've done stuff. You've done stuff, mate. No, good. Right. Yeah. Good. Okay, um, question two then, moving on. Against which side did Teimo Pukki score that hat-trick mm. on his home, first home appearance in the Premier League? That was uh, against Newcastle United, yeah. And it means he's now got yeah. as many Premier hat-tricks as Cristiano Ronaldo and Dennis Bergkamp, among others. Wow. Chris, you're, you're a Norwich City fan, aren't you? I'm impartial, James. I, I resent comment. Okay. Uh, but, but I live <laughs> in Norfolk, lovely county, two yeah. cathedrals. I said that last time. <laughs> yeah. T two <laughs> cathedrals and a, wonderful, and a wonderful player by the name of Temu Puki, who, uh, particularly at the start of the season, was, was so much fun to watch. I'll move on then. Uh, Duncan, who scored both the Wolves' mm. goals in that 2 0 win over Man City at the Etihad? Uh, it was Adama Traore. It certainly was. All right. Julian, how's it going? Yeah, all right. Three out of three so far. Bingo. All right. Wow. Uh, which of these players, question four, has not scored a Premier League hat-trick for Chelsea in the 2019-2020 season? Well, after the news tonight, he may never get a chance. Uh, it's Olivier Giroud. Right. And the news you're referring to, Duncan, is? Apparently, Chelsea uh, are going to buy Timo Werner. My understanding is that that deal is absolutely 100% done and dusted. <laughs> you boys are in the know, aren't you? Well, we, we have access we to the internet, yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> I feel like, I suppose for a man from Norfolk, is probably quite mystical. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, nice. Anyway, um, okay, we've got up to question five. Pierre Emerick Aubameyang scored his fiftieth goal for Arsenal in all competitions against Wolves in November. How many games did he take it take to reach that uh, total? Only seventy eight games. That is remarkable. That is remarkable. Ooh. Jolene, you still got that wrong. You still on one hundred percent? No, eighty percent now. It's still good. Still good. Did you have a stat you wanted to throw at us, Duncan, regarding a Mr. Bumiang? Um, well, this was about his 50th goal in all competitions. If he scores in Arsenal's next game when the Premier League resumes, uh, it'll be his 50th Premier League goal and he'll have exactly the same record as Huddersfield did in, uh, in their two seasons in the Premier League. 50 goals in 76 games. So something to aim for. All right. Is that good or bad? I'm not sure. Anyway, let's move on to our next question, which is question six. Who was the first manager to leave their posts in the 2019-2020 season? Uh, that was Javi Garcia. Right. Okay. And question seven, Duncan, which English player has provided the most Premier League assists so far? This was, I think, actually, let's just check in with Julian, because I think this was one that produced a variety of noises yeah. from you. Yeah. I, what I what did you come up I with? I didn't know. I put Trent, but I don't know if some of them were Champions League and stuff. No, you're you're spot on, spot on, Chris. What did you Good have? guess? <laughs> yeah, I, I had Trent, but I, but I knew that. I didn't guess it. You should get, you should not get <laughs> half a point guessing. Is it really. not eleven? I think it's eleven, Chris. I don't know if you get a bonus point for knowing the number. I thought it was twelve. I don't know. We checked with Duncan. <laughs> what, whatever right. your Google uh, question, uh, whatever Lex is saying. It is twelve. Yeah. Was Chris, it twelve? Right. Wow. <laughs> No Very nice. Amazing stuff. Uh, I'll just whiz through the last of these answers for everyone who's waiting. Uh, which of these players has scored at least 15 Premier League goals so far this season? Ings, Kane or Rashford? Uh, Danny Ings. Excellent. And other than Liverpool, which side has had the longest winning run in the Premier League this season? Uh, Leicester City. How many games? Uh, don't have, have that in front of me, actually, James. So, okay. No, right. Chris. Wow. Wow. Sorry. That's what right. you're here Question. for, Duncan. <laughs> Hands Question up. 10. <laughs> no one's perfect. Jorginho. Jorginho booked more often than any other player this campaign. Mm. How many times? Uh, 10 times. 10 times? Okay. All right. Like well, let's have a look at the guest scores then. See how you guys are getting on. Oh, wow. Chris. Nine. Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Why take, do you sound so surprised? That? Yeah. No, but I no, mean, I will. We'll get a, yeah. Um, to be fair, wow. I might do what Chris is doing and get my my son in the room so he can um, help us out with the answers. <laughs> You've not met my son, <laughs> right? Um, okay, he's, but he's still, not, he's not the sharpest of my sons. Uh, okay. The sharpest ones are in the other room. <laughs> Right, as indeed would I be were I, were I the sharpest of your sons. Um, so, well, that's a good start, I'm thinking, Julian, anyway, 7 out of 10. And yeah. I, would, uh, I, would, I would think we can probably move on now to round two. Again, we've got 10 questions. Again, 15 seconds uh, to answer each one. Duncan, a quick word on, uh, sorry, the scores nationwide. Have we got a lot of people on 10 out of 10 so far? Uh, the healthy amount, yeah, sort of 20, 26 ish. Uh, so that's a okay. you know pretty good start, yeah. So. All right, uh, okay. Well, then, anyway, round two then is all about Premier League stadia. Once again, ten seconds with fifteen seconds to answer each one, and round two starts now. Question one: Which of these clubs has not played at two different home grounds in the Premier League? Leicester City, Manchester City, or Swansea City? Which of those teams has not played at two different home grounds in the Premier League era? Oh, I can't press the button. There we go. Really? Oh, not that old Panic. One. It was a panic. Yeah. No, I've done it. I've done Question it. two. Which stadium has seen the most goals scored in the in Premier League history? Anfield, Old Trafford or Stamford Bridge? Where have the most goals come in Premier League history? On to question three. At which of the following grounds did Chelsea secure their first ever Premier League title 2005, the Reebok, the Riverside, or their own Stamford Bridge? Where did Chelsea's first Premier League title come back in Chris, 2005? Oh, whatever, mate. <laughs> Question four. 
Who is the single, uh, sorry, who is the highest scoring player at a single stadium in Premier League history? So the man who's got the most goals at one particular ground in Premier League history. Your options, Sergio Aguero, Thierry Henry, or Wayne oh, Rooney. What mm. a hard question that is. It is tough, that so one, no, a Question back. five, no, no. you might prefer this. Which of these is the most recent ground to host a Premier League match for the first time? Emirates, London Stadium, or Tottenham Hotspur Stadium? That's a little bit more doable, I'm thinking, that question. Yeah. On to question six. Which of these Premier League stadiums has the highest capacity? The Etihad, St. James's Park, or Villa Park? Julian, you've Ooh. had two of those as your home ground, so I'm thinking you should be able to get that one. Which know. of those three stadiums has the highest capacity? Question seven. In 2001, which Southampton legend scored the last ever goal at the Dell before Saints moved to St. Mary's Stadium? Was it James Beatty, Matt Letizia, or Shane Long? Who got the last goal at the Dell? Alrighty, on to question eight. Liverpool's Anfield Stadium has a stand named after which former player? Kenny Daglish? Robbie Fowler or Ian Rush? So Kenny Daglish, Robbie Fowler or Ian Rush? Who's got a stand named after them? Question nine. Which team holds the unwanted record of most Premier League games at a single ground without winning, failing indeed to win any of their 16 visits to Anfield in this competition? So it's the record for the most Premier League games at a single ground without ever winning. 16 of them at Anfield. Was it Everton, Norwich or Southampton? Oh, sorry, Sunderland. Oh, thank you, pardon. Question 10 then. Who were the first team to win away in the Premier League at both the Emirates Stadium and the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium? First team to win away in the Premier League at both the Emirates Stadium and the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Chelsea, Newcastle or West Ham? Wow, mm. yeah. Mm. I'm not so you sure said that it there, Julian. Yeah, it was a tough one. It was a tough, tough one. Uh, Chris, how do you feel? Well, a lot, a lot of questions favoured Julian there, didn't they? A lot of his ex clubs. <laughs> I know, I know what you're trying to do. So well, last time on the quiz, I see what you're trying to do, and maybe you'll succeed. But I'm doing my best. That's all I can oh, do. Oh, Chris, he's tried his hardest. There's a few Liverpool questions in there. That's not for me. That mm -hmm. I wouldn't know anything yeah. about that club. <laughs> Let's let's put some answers to those questions and see what it does to the scores. First of all, which of those clubs has not played at two different home grounds in the Premier League era? Leicester, Man City or Swansea? What have you got, Duncan? Spiritual home to the oldest ball boys in football. It's uh, Swansea City. <laughs> Very nice. OK. Which stadium has seen the most goals scored in Premier League history? Anfield, Old Trafford or Stamford Bridge? Uh, Old Trafford. All right. Yeah. Chris, you scored one of them, didn't you? Brilliant goal. Oh, I don't know. I don't like to talk about myself, James. Uh, outside of the left foot, <laughs> 25 yards past Peter Schmeichel. Wonderful strike. Technical. Right. Okay. Let's Very move good. on. Uh... Let's. Question three. Uh, which of those three grounds did Chelsea get their first ever Premier League title? Rebot, Riverside or Stamford Bridge? Well, you might remember Frank Lampard running through. Yeah, it was the Reebok. Right. Okay. Jolien, what did you have for the most recent ground to host a Premier League game for the first time? Oh, uh, well, it's Ooh, I'm sorry, I skipped a question. I do beg your pardon. Question <laughs> four. Question four. <laughs> this is, is the I, highest I, scoring I put, um, Yeah, I, I put Sergio. I don't know why. Did you? Chris, what did you put? Yeah. Chris should know. I did as like well. It. I thought this was a really tough question. Unnecessary, really. Really? really? Well, you both mm. got it wrong. Thierry Henry. Thierry Henry That's was the highest scoring right. player in a single stadium in Premier League history. Yeah, of course he was. you didn't. Oh. Mm. Question five: Which of those three uh, stadiums is the first? Is the most recent one to host a Premier League game for the first time? It was, of course, Duncan. Well, I, ho well, I hope Chris is going to accept this was an easier question. It was Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Right. Mm. Okay. Was, yeah. uh, Duncan, which of the three Premier League options we gave you as stadia has the highest capacity? Uh, also, the only ground to see David James play as a striker, it's the Etihad. Oh. Extraordinary, right. Okay, you're all stomping around, Julian. Did you get that? 
Yeah, yeah, I got that one. To be fair, recently it's only been recently. Had it too, hasn't it? Like two years ago. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yes. Two thousand. I'm not so sure Jolene when... got that one. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, well, give us the benefit of the doubt, Chris. Otherwise, I got that one. <laughs> Hmm. 2001 it was when a Southampton legend scored the last ever goal at the Dell before the move to St Mary's. Who was it, Duncan? Uh, it was Matthew Letizia. Oh. Good. Really? No chance. Don't believe him, James. It's just no, I got that wrong. That I is. went James Beatty. I didn't know. Yeah. What, I, I, mean, I think the respect, word legend was the giveaway in the question. Would... <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why yeah. I didn't understand why Shane Long, with respect, was in there. Yes. But... I just I got that wrong. That's okay, really never bad. mind. Question eight: Liverpool's Anfield Stadium has a stand named after which former player? Uh, Kenny Dalglish. Yes, Kenny. Yes, mm, be Kenny. Good. Yes. Question nine: Which team holds the unwanted record of most Premier League visits to a single ground without winning? Sixteen of them to Anfield. Who was that? It's Sunderland, and David Moyes once came there as manager and said he wanted to park a double-decker bus in front of the goal when a single-decker bus would have would have done just the job based on the standard dimensions of a goal. So a bit of a waste of, of a bus. <laughs> but yeah, Sunderland. <laughs> Question 10. Who were the first team to win away in the Premier League at both the Emirates Stadium and the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium? Well, they were happy about it. It was West Ham United. There you go. All right. Very long. good. Damn it. Let's see, Chris, if we can turn that frown upside down as we reveal the scores. Oh, not so good, actually, on that round. Seven yes. for Chris. Seven, and Jolien, you've uh, you picked poor, up a little bit. A couple of poor questions that round. Hmm. Yeah, okay, the questions. well, let's see. How... Yeah. Let's see how you guys fare with round three, which is called Who Am I? What we want to know is the name of the player that the clue describes. We're going to give you 40 seconds on each of these questions, but you do need to type the name in, so be careful with the spelling. Oh, Chris, we know what happened last time when you put in Christopher instead yeah. of Chris. I can only offer my apologies on behalf of the I'm dyslexic. Chris, but it does underline spelling the fact that you do need to be... Okay, Julian, well, best of luck then, because round three, who am I, <laughs> comprising a spot spelling I'm, I'm, test. I'm being serious, Chris. <laughs> All right, question one. I started my career in the Netherlands, who I also represented internationally, and I also played in Portugal and Spain. I won the Premier League Golden Boot with two different clubs, and I played my last competitive game in England in the 2008 FA Cup final. Who am I? I started my career in the Netherlands. I also represented Netherlands internationally. I also played in Portugal and Spain. I won the Premier League Golden Boot twice, two different clubs, and I played my last competitive game in England in the 2008 FA Cup Final. Who am I? Hmm. Oh, we're watching you, Julian. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, you're doing, you're doing dictation. Fantastic. Okay, probably. Oh, I've not uh, got it in, we'll it's a hard one to spell. I've not got it in. Yeah, yeah, it is. Question two. I began my career with a Midlands club before moving to Italy and back to the Midlands all as a teenager. I've also played in Scotland and America and I am the highest scoring Irishman in Premier League history. Right. I began my career with a Midlands club. I then moved to Italy and then back to the Midlands all as a teenager. I've also played in Scotland and America and I am the highest scoring Irishman in Premier League history, who am I? <sighs> mm. This one's a bit easier to spell. Yeah. You may find. All right, question three. I made my Premier League debut in 2002 and I'm still playing in the competition. Capped over 50 times for England. I was once the youngest goal scorer in Premier League history and have played over 100 games in the competition for three different clubs. Quite a remarkable CV, that. Made my Premier League debut in 2002. I'm still playing in the competition. I've been capped over 50 times for England. I was once the youngest goal scorer in Premier League history, and I played over 100 games in the competition for three different clubs. I'd be surprised if you don't get that one, but, you know. Anyway, question four. 
I was the first Australian to feature in the PFA Team of the Year, and I have won the Champions League. My most recent job was not county manager, and my wife once finished as runner-up on I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. There you go. I was the first Australian to feature in the PFA Team of the Year. I've won the Champions League. My most recent job was not county manager, and my wife once finished as a runner-up on I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. Interesting detail that at the end. <laughs> Chris, do you know that one? Yes, I do. Did, did they write these themselves, the players? <laughs> I'm not absolutely sure. We'll ask Duncan in a second. Question five, though. I made my first Premier League appearance alongside Ian Rush and my last alongside Danny Simpson. Fans of my first club used to refer to me as God and I once held the record for the fastest Premier League hat trick. Who's that there? Made my first Premier League appearance alongside Ian Rush and my last one alongside Danny Simpson. Fans of my first club used to refer to me as God and I once held the record for the fastest Premier League hat trick. Of course, now in the position of Sadio Mane. But it used to uh, belong to who? We've got five seconds left on that one and then we're going to get some answers. Very good. All right, then. So, who am I was the question, and let's find out what the answers were. Duncan, first of all, mm. I started my career in the Netherlands. That fellow there, golden boot, two different clubs. Yes, this man I was, was. I wasn't going to read the whole thing on. Yeah, there's, there's no need, really. Um, the last player, in fact, to win the golden boot for a team outside the top five in England. Uh, it's Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank. Oh, Hasselbank, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Can, Chris, did you get I, that? I couldn't quite spell that, but I, well, I did, but I couldn't get it in time. Yeah. And it you is know, a with fiendish my Wi-Fi name. issues, I, yeah, but yeah. I should be given that. Can I be? Can yeah. you sort something, please, James? I couldn't get it in either. I got that. Right, the man, of course, replaced tricky, you. At tricky Bridge. spelling. Jimmy Floyd. Yeah, he did a man. better job than me. Is that what you're getting at? Is well, that, I didn't say that. I'm just saying he came after you. Uh, well, I have a question I two you then. Thinking. Qu question two. I began my career with the Midlands club before moving to Italy and back to the Midlands all as a teenager. I played in Scotland and America and I'm the highest scoring Irishman in Premier League history. Who am I? Julian Lescott. I mean, I'm not. Who, who am I? Yes, you are. <laughs> I mean, you're not either, but yes, it is. Yeah. Excellent. Chris, did you get that one? Yes, I did. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Question Good three. Player. I made my Premier League debut. He certainly was in 2002. I am still playing in the competition. Capped over 50 times. We know who this is, don't we? Yeah. James Milner. It is James Milner. It is James Milner. One of your teammates, of course, at Man City. Yeah. Very few cool people guy. in the Premier League that he hasn't been a, a teammate of at some uh, time or other, I imagine. Uh, on to question four then. I was the first Australian to feature in the PFA Team of the Year and have won the Champions League. My most recent job was not County Manager. And crucially, my wife wants to feature, uh, finish as a runner up in I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. Who are we talking about there? Harry Q. Correct. Oh, knowledge. Was that, who was that? Was that Julian? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, Chris. Did you know that about Harry Kuehl? Your, your yeah. Your, that was your... that was the last bit. Why well, I got it? I was really confused with the first two clues, but then right. that I'm a celebrity bit that nailed it on for me. Important okay, has he clue. talked about that Important on the sofa partner. at the score? No, not at all. No. Oh, right. <laughs> you can ask him next. Not mentioned it once. No. Just, yeah, know, well, yeah. Quiet moment. All right. Uh, final question in this round. I made my first Premier League appearance alongside Ian Rush and my last alongside Danny Simpson. My fans used to refer to me as God and I once held the record for the fastest Premier League hat-trick. It is, Duncan? Robbie Fowler. Yeah. Of course. Anything you want to add about Robbie Fowler? Well, he's got three, he's got three perfect hat-tricks in his Premier League career, um, which some Premier League players haven't done, I'm, I'm led to believe. So that's pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Oh. Wait, I've got an issue here. Yeah? My score's only saying three out of five, and I got four of them right. Which one do you think you got right that we that? that uh, I don't oh, know. I you don't know which one, right? Okay. 
I definitely got four. Those are your scores, and it's still a two-point margin between you. So it should be one now. It's very, I very even. Got four. But then you know, Jolie and Chris says he's got another one that etc. and so on. Yeah. How no, but he missed it the last one. There's a difference. It's 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 early yeah, doors. You know what they Jolie. say? It all it, it all evens out across the season. So I'm yeah. I'm sure it will <laughs> all be fair. Duncan, what about the it's nationwide easy. leaderboard? Well, it's uh, it's very exciting. We've got a huge spread of people on 23. Well, I say huge, that's seven okay. people, which is pretty good, pretty good. And then at one leader, D underscore 67 uh, on 24, which is an excellent score thus far. So, um, yeah. Oh, sorry, for it, half, it? Mm. Right, magnificent. And what about aid and return of the Jedi, our two previous winners? Can't see them in and around the top at the moment, but you know what they oh. say in this game is uh, was it Chris said it's a marathon, not a sprint. Um, so we'll see. They've bottled it, haven't they? Mm. Well, that's the other. Well, maybe they have. they've got to do it for longer. Prove <laughs> themselves. Maybe, maybe they have. Maybe they have. One week wonders. Mm. We're, We're only halfway through today. Yeah. Today's quiz, so plenty of time for anybody to make their mark on the top positions. Next up, excitingly is round four, which is the video round. We've got a little bit of action to show you on one or two of these questions. So just watch the footage and then answer the question that follows. You will have 30 seconds on each of these to answer uh, the questions. And it's all about the Champions League. All right, this is, ooh, 2019 and it's Liverpool with that 4-0 semi-final win over Barcelona. Extraordinary, just extraordinary. But who was it who scored that crucial fourth goal for Liverpool? So it was the semi-final over Barcelona in 2019, the impossible comeback. Who got the fourth goal? They'd lost, remember, the first leg 3-0 in Barcelona. But they managed to turn it around thanks to this goal in the 79th minute. They went on oh. to win the final in Madrid, of course, but it couldn't have happened without this fourth goal scored by who? question here's another one question two excluding shootouts who was the last goalkeeper to save a penalty in a champions league final oh, excluding wow. shootouts the last penalty that was so the last keeper to save a penalty in a champions league final nine penalties have been awarded in champions league finals over the years five of them have been converted so there have been three that have been saved and one that was missed completely. We need the most recent keeper who saved a penalty in the Champions League final. Some more VT for you here. These are some happy footballers who've just won a Champions League. Hurrah. But for every winner, there's a loser. As Nick Berry kind of once told us. Uh, which side, this is the question, lost consecutive? Champions League finals in 2000 and 2001. Rotten luck, going to the final two years in a row and losing both times. Which team did that happen to in 2000 and 2001? It's actually happened to two different clubs, but the most recent one, most recent occasion, was 2000 and 2001, and we want to know who were the unfortunate losers in those two finals. Very good. On to question four. In 2003, who became the first English side to win an away Champions League game at San Siro in Milan? Five clubs had tried and failed to do this before this club went to San Siro, the Giuseppe Miazza, and came away with a victory. Of course, if it was at San Siro, it was probably against either Inter or Milan. 2003, one English club finally achieved a victory away there. Who was it? Question five then. Who holds the record for the most goals scored in a single Champions League campaign for an English side, netting 12 in 2002-2003? The most goals scored in a single Champions League campaign for an English side. Which player holds that record? So your Drogba's got the most Champions League goals for an English side with 36, but we're talking about for one specific season. Which player did that? Well then, there were just two points between you going into round four. 
very bad shortly we'll that. see if bad Chris man. has managed to extend his lead whether you've got Joni and snapping at your heels let's mm-hmm. let's see uh, first of all Duncan who was mm. it who got that incredible fourth goal for Liverpool against Barcelona well a man who up until this season had scored with every shot he'd ever taken in the Champions League including in the final last season it's uh, Divock Origi Divock Origi incredible Chris Jolien did you get yeah yes Yes. I didn't put his first Questions. name though, so yes. I don't know if I needed to, because it probably never gave me the points. Oh, don't be like that. <laughs> Just say it. That's what seems to be. I'm not with. sure. I'm not Happy sure. Question first, two. Wait. Excluding shootouts, who was the last play, uh, keeper to save a penalty in a Champions League final? Uh, this was Petr Cech against his old mate oh, yes. Arjen Robben in 2012. Mm. Uh, Extraordinary, yeah. On that bitter, bitter night for Bayern Munich, Julian, did you get that, Chris? No, I I got that. No. It was a what? It was a guess. I shouldn't be allowed that. Can I have that taken off? <laughs> <laughs> it was a guess. Now you're just taking that. the quiz. Uh, we Ooh. will move on to question three. Which side lost consecutive Champions League finals in 2000 and 2001? Uh, that was Valencia under Hector Coupe. Yeah. yeah. One man human pet cemetery, one. Hector Couper. Uh, and in 2003, <clears throat> who became the first English club to win an away Champions League game at San Siro? Uh, that was Arsenal, inspired by Thierry Henry. <sighs> at Inter. Yeah, it was incredible. It was 5 1. They utterly they didn't just win, they destroyed them. Destroyed them. Remarkable. And question five, and then we'll get your scores. Who holds the record for the most goals scored in a, cha- a single Champions League campaign for an English side with 12 in 2002-2003? Well, that season he got as many as Alan Shearer and uh, Brazilian Ronaldo combined. It was Ruud van Nistelrooy. Oh, right. Van Nistelrooy. No, Hard. Chris? No, Julian? No, no. Was it, though? But he finished Champions League top scorer for two straight seasons, yeah, didn't he, I at forgot that, about that point? Him. I forgot about it. It's easy for you, James. It's easy when you know, isn't it? That's so true. That is so true, Chris. Uh, Let's have a quick check on the scores. This is what I mean. He didn't give me a Rigi because I didn't put his first name in. No, that's bad. Can can we give Jolien that a Rigi one and the one from earlier? We'll certainly (laughs) add all these points on at the end. For now, let's just say that you've extended your lead, Chris, by one point. How does that stack up against the leaders? Well, how does it, is it? Well, let's see if we can make you feel better when we see how well you're competing with the, the top quizzes nationwide. Duncan. Well, our friend D underscore 67, who was leading after the last round, is still leading. He got five out of five, or she got five out of five. Uh, so they're on 29. So they only dropped one point so far. So they're right. doing pretty well. That is prodigious. Yeah. And 23 <laughs> out of the, uh, what is it, 30 so far? How does that stack up? Pretty good. That'll put you in the, uh, probably in the top. 150 so top 100 Chris. actually so yeah yeah not bad but that would be a record for you chris wouldn't it it, it would what what a way to finish right. yes mm. absolutely Jolie, not far Emotional. behind two rounds to go for you to close that gap round five is coming up next it is the missing link round i'm going to give you four names and what connects those four we need you to answer with the missing fifth name you're going to have 40 seconds of thinking time for each of these once again, take care with your spelling. Round five. Okay, the first one is this. We're looking for the five United clubs to have played in the Premier League. You've got Manchester United, Newcastle United, Sheffield United, and of course, West Ham United. Which is the other United that's played in the Premier League? Man United is the most ever, pre- well, the, uh, the only ever presence in the uh, the Premier League. Uh, the next most regular would be Newcastle. They've had 25 seasons and West Ham 24. Sheffield United have so far managed four seasons in the Premier League. And there's one other United that have featured in the competition. But which one is it? Mm, it is. <laughs> United. <laughs> Mm, I'll take him serious. Oh, Chris. Question two then. The last five PFA player 
Players Player of the Year winners. We've given you Virgil van Dijk, Mo Salah, N'Golo Kante and Riyad Mahrez. Which is the other player who's won a PFA Players Player of the Year in the last five seasons? Virgil van Dijk, Mo Salah, N'Golo Kante and Riyad Mahrez. Who's the missing name? Van Dijk was won it in 2019, Mo Salah 2018, Kante the year before that and Riyad Mahrez in 2016. Man United players have won this on more occasions than any other club. 11, in fact. No player has won it more than twice. Uh, the lucky ones to double up on this were Mark Hughes, Alan Shearer, Thierry Henry, and Cristiano Ronaldo and Gareth Bale. On to question three. Uh, the last five permanent England managers. Hmm, should be easy, this. So we've given you Gareth Southgate, Sam Allardyce, Roy Hodgson and Fabio Capello. One name is missing from that list of five, <clears throat> the last five permanent England managers. Gareth Southgate of that list has been in charge for 41 matches so far with a very fine winning percentage, 58.5%. I say very fine. It's not as good as Sam Allardyce's, which is currently sitting at 100% win rate, although he was only in charge for that one match. Mind you, Roy Hodgson, in his 56 matches, had a 58.9% winning ratio. And Fabio Capello, in his 42 matches in charge, won 66.7% of them. So, you know, perspective. Question four, the five current Champions League clubs, sorry, the five current championship clubs, a little bit of a difference there, who have never played in the Premier League. Five teams in the championship who've never played in the Premier League. We've given you Brentford, Bristol City, Luton, and Millwall. Who's missing from that list of championship clubs who've never been in the Premier League? 19 of the championship sides have, of course, been in the Premier League. Six clubs in League One have also been in the Premier League. And remarkably, there are also three clubs in League Two who were previously featured in the Premier League. Oh, but which is the missing one of the that? championship sides that has never played in the Premier League from that list? Bradford, Bristol City, Luton and Millwall. And finally, for this round, we're looking for five Spanish players who have scored 50 or more goals in the Premier League. Fernando Torres has won, so is David Silva, Juan Mata and Cesc Fabregas have also reached the half-century milestone. And one other Spanish player, who is it? More than 130 Spaniards to choose from that uh, have featured in the Premier League, but only five of them have scored 50 or more goals. Torres, by the way, has the most among the Spaniards with 85, David Silva with 57, Mata has 51, and Fabregas got to 50 on the nose. Who's the missing man, though, who also reached 50 or more Premier League goals and plays for Spain? Very good. That was round five. Missing link. Duncan, should we put them out of nah. their misery with some answers to a particularly tough set of questions? First off, and this was fiendish, the other United club that's featured in the Premier League was? Uh, Leeds United. Yes, it was. Chris, did you get that? Yeah, I got that, yeah. All right. Yeah, it's back, back oh, in my good. day, James. Joe Lee was it? Probably yes. Probably just been born, yeah. Yeah. Right. Championship okay. player than I was. Well, we look forward to seeing Leeds back again. You never know, depending on what happens with etc. and so on. It could be soon. Question two. Meantime, the last five PFA players, Player of the Year winners. Who was the missing name there? That was uh, Eden Hazard. Mm -hmm. Oh, got that wrong. Jolene. Yeah, got making up right. a little bit of ground, perhaps. Yeah. Nah. All I, right. I don't then. know if no Marvel answers were submitted in time. Well, let's hope so. The last five permanent England managers. Did you get this, Chris? Probably not. I went Steve McLaren. Yeah, so did I. Julian? Yeah, Steve well, you're McLaren. both absolutely correct. Because Julian, Steve McLaren, I don't think I was name properly. Yeah, he gave me my debut. Steve McLaren gave me my debut. So. Steve McLaren gave you a debut. Right, okay. Excellent. Yeah. Well done, but, Steve. But I've only got three. So far, I've only got three out of five, and I've answered the first three questions right. Right, which doesn't all go well for the next one, which is, Duncan, the five current championship clubs who've never played in the Premier League. Who was the missing name? They're also the only former champions of England who've never played in the Premier League. Uh, it's Preston North End. Man. Okay. 
Mm. And question five, five Spanish players who've scored 50 or more Premier League goals. The missing name was, Chris, did you get this one? I thought it was Diego Costa. You thought right. Julian, you got that as well, didn't you? Yeah. Yes. No, I didn't get that. Ah, right. Hence the, th the three out of five. Okay, we'll just quickly tot up your scores and see if you manage to close the gap up or maybe even move past Chris Sun with round five. The answer is no. You only give me three opposite. out of five. You only give me mm. two. I didn't get the three. It didn't I, give you three I out of five. Four, but yeah. I spelt McLaren wrong. I mean, yeah, Steve I McLaren. Me. I mean, it's a difficult, it's a difficult surname to spell that. Right. Uh, well, it's all about fun tonight. How would you so as long as you're having there? fun, McLaren, uh, M C C L A R. Oh, come yeah. on. Yeah. Is that right? I've no way of checking. That is right. Um, you wouldn't but... say two C's there. No, yeah. You'd say I one C. Yeah. A lot of people in Scotland would. Uh, the, I take your point, Chris. Spelling's not easy, some of these names. But the, the key thing is, are you having fun? Oh, yes. Brilliant. All right. And it's always fun when you're winning, isn't it, Chris? Yeah. No. All right. Well, uh, we're going to move dyslexic. on then to check on the schools nationwide, Duncan. Yes. Well, it was a tough round for a lot of people, I think. Um, we are now left with a five-way battle at the top which is unprecedented huh. in the beautiful quiz. So, yeah, heading into the final round, we've got five people are tied on 32 points. So it really is up for grubs now. Who are the names? Uh, we've got JG1992. We've got Dan from Manchester. Uh, Sleaze LPP. Brett's Angels. Nice nod to the, the striker Brett Angel. Um, and another LPP, Ellis Sleaze guy in fifth. So, oh, yeah. Oh, a good spread. Perhaps they're said. related. Very nice. Okay, Ooh. well, it's ever so tight at the top, rather less so between our two celebrity guests. But let's see what our final round of the beautiful quiz does to those scores. It's all about the 2010s. We've got 10 questions, appropriately enough, for you. You will have 30 seconds to answer each one. So your 10 questions on the 2010s start now. 29-10 was the first Premier League season to see a team score 100 or more goals in a campaign. Which team managed that? In the 2010, sorry, in the 29-10 campaign, who was the team who became the first club to score 100 or more goals in a Premier League season? All these questions referring to the 2010s, which statisticians take from the year 2009. Carlos Tevez and which Manchester United player shared the golden boot in the 2010-11 campaign? It's question two. Carlos Tevez sharing the golden boot in the 2011, sorry, in the 2010-11 campaign with which player from Man United? This is before he went off, of course, later in his golfing holiday and all that unpleasantness back then he was banging them in but he had to share the golden boot that year with which man united player moving on to question three which is who only whose only premier league assist was for sergio aguero's title winning goal in the 2011-12 season one of the most famous goals in premier league history and the assist is pretty notorious as well because it was the only assist he ever had in the Premier League. Julian, I think you were on the field when this happened, so yeah, one would hope well, you okay, might I'm get, this get it. One. I'm going to get it wrong. Don't tell us. Spelling. Oh, do you think? All right. Yeah. Mm. Question four: Who became the only team to win the FA Cup and be relegated in the same season in 2012-13? Remember this, they got to the FA Cup final, they won the FA Cup final in a pretty sizable upset. But that same season it was a bittersweet finale because they were also relegated from the Premier League. Which club was it though? 2011, sorry, 2012. Was Jolie playing in that as well? I mean, are we just, is this round all games Jolie's playing in? I can't remember the relegation game though. I did it. 
Question five. Manuel Pellegrini won the Premier League title in his first season with Man City in 2013-2014 with Julian Lescott on his side. Actually, what country, though, is Manuel Pellegrini from? Ooh. What country is Manuel Pellegrini from? Premier League title winner in his first season as manager of Man City. Where does he hail from? On to question six. Who did Mauricio Pochettino replace as Tottenham manager ahead of the 2014-2015 season? Who was the Spurs boss before Mauricio Pochettino took over at the start of the 20 or in the 2014, sorry, no, at the start of the 2014-2015 season? Pochettino, who did he replace at White Hart Lane? Question seven. How many Premier League games did Leicester lose in their 2015-2016 title winning campaign? Love a bit of multiple choice right now, but we're not giving you any yeah. options. <laughs> Such a famous season that we think you should know. How many games did they lose in that incredible title winning campaign in 2015-2016? Question eight then. It's a true or false. 2016-17 was the first time that the top two Premier League sides were both London clubs. Is that true or false? 2016-17 was the first time the top two Premier League sides were both London clubs. True or false? Getting quite recent now. Did two Premier League sides top, sorry, did two London sides Top the Premier League in 2016-17. Question nine. In 2017-18, which player set a new record for most goals scored in a 20-team Premier League season? It was a phenomenal campaign by this individual. It was the 2017-2018 season and he set a new record for the most goals scored in a 20-team Premier League season. And on to the final question for this evening. In 2018-19, which were the only promoted side not to be relegated straight back to the Championship? So, the season before this one, three clubs came back, came back, came up. Two went straight back down to the championship, but one survived. Which one was it? Five seconds left for your answer on the only promoted side to survive last season. And that's it. The answers are in. Last season. And we can see some scores very shortly. But first, let's romp through the questions that have been puzzling us there. Duncan, first of all, 29-10. Yes. Who shouted out what? Me, like my score out of that, out of them 10. Oh, have you already seen your score? Was it really, really good? No, it wasn't. Ah, <laughs> all right. Yeah. Okay. Can well, I just say, James, where it mine, was ex my, yes. mine was excellent. My score. <laughs> really okay i'm looking forward to seeing them both let's start with question one jolian uh 2009-10 first premier league season to see a team score 100 or more goals in a campaign which club was that i've said united no it wasn't chris did you get this i went chelsea you went right it was chelsea duncan correcto correct amanda yeah 38 goals in the last 10 games so uh pretty good game very good. What about question two, Duncan? Carlos Tevez and which Man United player had to share the golden boot in the 2010-2011 campaign? Uh, he's the top scoring player with all the letters in Arteta in his name. Uh, it is Dimitar Berbatov. Mikhail Arteta's third Crikey. in that category, if anyone wonders. So, yeah. Right. Okay. That's a question for a future beautiful quiz. Excellent. Uh, <laughs> question three. Who, who, Whose only Premier League assist was that 
infamous. Uh, sorry, we're just getting a little bit of interference there. Driver 67, driver 67. But anyway, sorry, right. Now, <laughs> whose only Premier League assist was for Sergio Aguero's title winning goal in the 2011 2012 season? Jolian, you were there. Tell us. Yeah. Mario Balotelli. Absolutely right. Chris, you got that too, I imagine? Yeah. Yeah. I only found that I, I, last week or the week before I was yeah. watching something. That was, I think yes. that was on another quiz. I'm not saying Duncan's copying quiz questions from other quizzes, but that was... <laughs> it is quiz. remarkable that he only oh, had that one assist, but one it assist, was a pretty yeah. special assist. Yeah. yeah so, not, Julian, not are, went are you surprised... Jolene, are you surprised that he only ever had one assist for the for Man City? Not really, no. No, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't what he no. was there for. No. Right, okay. Uh... <laughs> All right, do you have happy memories of Mario? Yeah, yeah, no. Mario's a cool guy, but in terms of assists, that wasn't his, that wasn't his thing. I can't imagine Sergio having right. too many either, to be honest. Okay, all right. Oh, the way they... Pass the ball around these days. They, Perhaps they more, goal but goal Duncan, they, we... yeah, they were a bit more selfish in front of goal. Right. Okay. Part of the DNA, as you know so well, Chris. Uh, moving on to question four. Hey, this is also Julian Lescott related. Yeah. You were on the bench, Julian, when yep. Wigan won the FA Cup. Perhaps those yep. two facts are related. It was Wigan. We'll never know. Did you get yeah. it? Yeah, I got nice. that. Okay. Okay, good. And question five, your former manager, Manuel Pellegrini, where's he from? Chilean. Yes, that's right. Chris, did you get that? Yeah, I got that right. That was three questions on the spin uh, related to Jolian, <laughs> which is nice. Let's see why you, why you did that. Uh, okay. I mean, no, you, they were. Sorry. No, go ahead. <laughs> No, I was going to say, I mean, in the last uh, quiz that Chris took part in, he was complaining there were too many with him in it and he couldn't spell his first name. So he can't win, really. So, yeah. yeah, if anything, we're doing you a favour, Chris, by keeping you out of the questions to avoid confusing you. No, that, that's fair. Uh, what I would say is Peter Crouch has got to Duncan, hasn't he? He's nobbled him. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> few people haven't been in some way affected by Peter Crouch, I think, in this industry. Let's uh, get the answer to question six, which is, who did Mauricio Pochettino replace as Spurs manager? Uh, that was Tim Sherwood. Yes. Mm. Yes. All right. Hey, a former teammate of yours, Chris Sutton. Yes. Ever exactly. Former captain. I boots many, many moons ago. Yeah, there you go. Uh, question seven. How many Premier League games did Leicester lose in their 2015-16 title winning campaign? Do you know this, Julian? No, I put six. Chris? I went three. Once again, your instincts prove 100% on the mm. nose. Three is the correct <sighs> answer. Luck, Duncan, that true... Well, is it luck? Is it... I don't know. Yeah. Or is it the universe somehow <laughs> no, moving <obviously>. with you? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Question... No, where are we up to? Question eight. True or false? What was it? True or false? It was false. False. Uh, it, it happened was. in 0304 and 0405. So, okay. Yeah. But not in 1617. Very good. In 1718, which player set a new record for most goals scored in a 20 team Premier League season? Uh, that was Mohamed Salah. Okay. Oh. Right. You, you both got that, I imagine. Chris Julian, yeah. yeah, Mo Salah. No, no, I didn't get that right actually. Mm, okay. Well, how about this final one then, Julian? In 2018-19, yes. who were the only promoted side not to be relegated straight back to the championship? I think, who did I put did for that? Uh... It's your former side, well, one of them. West Brom. Oh, no Wolves. I didn't put them. I didn't put them anyway, but I just, yeah. All right. Ah, uh, yeah. fuming. Right. I didn't get that right. Okay. I see. I see. Should we check the scores? No, don't. There they are. Oh. Wow. 
And what started out as a close contest has seen a gaping chasm opened up between Chris and Jolien. North Norfolk Wi-Fi mm. notwithstanding, Chris has romped uh, home in this yeah. particular little duel of the beautiful quiz. But it is only a corner of, of a contest that's been going on across the country. And Duncan, let's come to you then to find out who has been the ultimate winner of this final edition for now of the beautiful quiz. Well, it was, um, as we discovered, it was pretty tight going into this round, but we've got a, we've got a winner, we've got an outright winner uh, with 42 out of 45. So again, you know, the standard of quizzing across the country in the last four weeks has been tremendous. Um, and it is Leslie's Ella Pipi with 42 nice. out of uh, 45. Yeah. I mean, I complained before there weren't, the team names didn't have enough syllables, possibly too many this time, but you know, we, we go with it. It's fine. All right. The Sleaze Ella Pipi. Mm. Good. All yes. right. Well, congratulations to you, Le Sleaze Ella yeah. Pipi, uh, because that's a phenomenal effort. Those questions weren't the easiest, and you bested even top former Premier League pros like Chris Sutton and Jolien Lesko, and indeed everybody else who took part in the quiz. Phenomenal. Chris, did you enjoy yourself this evening? Oh, one of the most enjoyable nights I've had ever. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful stuff. What a night. Uh, Julian, if we ever do yes. it again, will you come back and join us again? Yeah, definitely. If you let me uh, miss okay. some, some answers, though. Right, okay. We'll have a special mm. Julian Les yeah. Lescott round for you. Actually, I think we already did this time, so maybe another one. <laughs> right. So it's been so much fun. Thank you both so much for being with us. Uh, both tonight and, and back in the first one, uh, Chris Sutton. And thanks to everyone at home who's been Thank playing you. along. I hope you've enjoyed the beautiful quiz. Many thanks to Duncan and his uh, army of uh, fact finders for the questions. And uh, we hope to be joining you again soon uh, when the occasion demands for another set of beautiful quizzes. For now, though, from all of us here, it's goodbye.